Hey guys, so this is where we left off in our previous video where I uh, walked you through how to um, unwrap that rectangular box uh, which is going to be our PC tower and so what I've done next is you know I've loaded this image into an image editing software uh, Photoshop in this case but you know if you've got any other sort of stuff like uh, I don't know paint.net or, or GIMP which is also a good uh, a good one both of which are free so they're really good to use um, you know you want to load the image up and you'll have something that looks similar to this so you've got the front the back the side uh, the other side the bottom and the top so you know what I'm going to be doing in this case is you know I've gone online and I've already found images uh, on the front the back and the side so I'm going to be using these images on my actual texture sheet for my PC tower you could hand paint it if you wished but I always find you know for certain objects you can't really get away with hand painting it you know like a PC tower you know it's just a waste of time if you're doing stuff like alpha mapping and creating foliage and trees and all that kind of stuff then you could maybe you know you could get away with doing that if you're going to do like a wood texture but for something like a PC tower no don't waste your time you know I always recommend taking your own pictures and use using those as textures so if you got if you have access to a camera then take a photograph of your PC tower you know there's no better ref reference images one that than one that you take yourself So first of all I'm just going to copy this image and I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm just going to paste it into there. Um, you then need to go onto the rectangular marquee tool. I just call it a rectangular selection tool. Um, and basically what you want to do is kind of draw out this box around the edges here and just delete all the bits that we don't need so we want to kind of crop it to the edge of this particular object or of this particular uh, the front view of the tower so if we just kind of continue doing this and the bottom that's fine and you know I do want to line it up with this you know with my front view of, of, of my tower but it's not going to kind of fit exactly so what you can do then um, it's just press control T and it's gonna give you this kind of free transform tool there is another way that you can access it so if I just undo that you can go to image on your on your toolbar go down to free transform just there and you just want to scale that in so it fits the actual texture you know make sure you don't leave any green lines because they will appear on your object you always want to kind of go kind of over overlap them slightly so like like so just make sure that you can't see any green lines then press enter so that's the front of my PC tower done if I want to then just go into the image with the back of my PC tower copy that paste again I'm just gonna get rid of the areas that I don't need then press control T to free transform and to scale that down so it fits this this box like so and then I'm going to do the side of the machine and as you probably saw a little earlier uh, this view that shows the side of the machine it's not exactly from you know straight on so I can't just kind of copy and paste and apply it straight away because it's at an angle so the way that I'm going to be doing this one uh, in particular is I'm going to press control T and then if you hold control you see how the icon changes when I'm hovering over, over the corner 
to like a normal mouse tool from like a resize tool if I drag this out you see how it changes it's kind of like changing perspective in an image and it's not the best thing because it will distort be especially because this image isn't of a high resolution but you can see straight away I've changed the way that that image looks it looks like it's from flat on now whereas before it looked like I was viewing it from above you just press enter and I'm just gonna see how much I can get rid of at this stage so if I just get rid of like the back area just here I am cropping over it a little bit and the top that's not too bad it is a little bent so you may want to kind of be a bit precise with that uh, you could just press control T and just hold control and just drag that down a little so the angle changes again so if you're not happy with the way it's kind of going or looking then you can always just change the angle just get rid of this front area and then I'm just going to get rid of this bottom area like that and there you have it the side of the um, oh let me just get rid of this bit just here there we have it the side of the tower whoops don't want to be doing that so I'm just going to scale this again so it's just kind of overlapping our green layout um, what you can see straight away is that you know there's it's got this kind of highlight this kind of reflection which may be okay you know you may get away with it I guess but you can go to image adjustments auto levels uh, see if that does the trick it's made it a little better it's kind of changed the contrast so if I just flick between it you see how it's changed the colors so I'm actually going to leave it like that for now but you could actually create a new layer and just kind of select black a paintbrush you could either just change the opacity down or if you paint over it with a hard brush of course we don't want a soft brush so turn the hardness up and just kind of paint over it like this I know I've kind of gone way over again if you hold hold shift you, you'll be able to draw in it painting only a straight line which is very very useful so as you paint over it you can use layer effects so if you just go over here to the actual layers dock and hit this drop down if I just kind of go through the different layer effects something like that so like soft light or hard lights a bit too intense but I think you know soft light was quite a good one because that'll make it darker in the areas that you're painting like like so so you can have a little play around with that and see you know if it works for you if it doesn't work for you different layer effects will give you different effects uh, different outputs I guess so you want to be careful on what you're using um, but you know just something to have, have have a go with when you're actually texturing your uh, PC tower or whatever it may be so like I said you know the other side and the top and the bottom I'm not going to worry too much about uh, when it comes to text texturing they're just going to be plain colors so I'm going to go on my color picker tool which is just here and I'm going to pick I think the gray from like the front it's actually black but because there's like a reflection on there it will look gray got my paintbrush and I'm just going to kind of paint you can reduce the paintbrush size if you want to be a bit more accurate and I'm just going to paint that in that particular color you know, if you think that's a bit too light then you can just color pick a darker kind of tone that's that's within this something like that might, might be better so let's say you want this this tone just here just paint over that area and this area too so I'm just going to kind of do the outline and then just paint sh straight through the middle the bottom I am going to give a lighter tone of grey because um, you know that's probably a silver kind of area so it'd probably be a lighter tone 
that isn't white it's actually grey but it looks really kind of light but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now so that's my texture sheet uh, completed you can kind of clean it up if, if you wish as well with like selection boxes and deleting certain areas like so uh, but again you know we're not going to worry so much about that right now because it's a really simplistic um, tutorial and it's your first kind of steps on unwrapping so don't worry too much about if it's not the cleanest te texture sheet you're just gonna make sure that you get something on there you know have a go so w w once that's done I'm just gonna click on to save you could save it as a PSD if you want to uh, maintain the layers of your Photoshop file but I actually don't I just want to save it as a JPEG so I'm gonna just you know, overwrite that PC Tower .jpeg file, the one that had just the outlines on them. I'm gonna hit OK. I I always say, you know, make sure your quality set settings are at least 10 or above, because we don't want to be, you know, losing any uh, quality of your texture by reducing it at any kind of lower. So 10 is probably the minimum that I, I would say. Press OK now for the exciting bit let's apply that to our object and see what it looks like so if you go back into 3ds max we can just close this window here we can just minimize this um, unwrap that we expanded earlier and then we're going to go into our material editor so you go to again there's a couple of different ways that we can access it you can either click on the material ed editor icon just here which will bring it up you can go under rendering material editor compact material editor and that will bring it up or you could just press M on the keyboard and that will also bring it up so once you have that material ed editor up you just go on to a new material any blank material is fine you go down to maps and then diffuse color you just click none so you want to be making sure that you're selecting none on the right of diffuse color then you have an option for bitmap and that's going to allow us to search for a, an image file for our texture so you just double click on bitmap and again I'm just going to find that file that I've just um, created you can see there straight away that that texture is there. there's a little preview window hit open now it's essential now that you go back to parent too so this icon just here second from the right you click that and it will take you back to parent the parent of the material is like the highest level of the material you know you can have some really intense materials that have loads of different layers um, and going back to parent just means that you know the output you get is of all the different layers combined so it's really really good and important that you that you do that and make it a habit to always go back to parent so the next step to apply it is ensure that your object is selected so mine is actually selected like like so and then I hit this icon here it's the third one from the left and if you hover over it it will say it will read sorry um, assign material to selection so you click that and it's assigned that material to the selection but we can't see it yet so the way that you make it vis visible is hitting this icon here so it's fourth from the right if you hover over it it will read show standard map in viewport so you click that one there and you can see straight away you know what our PC tower looks like so if I ro rotate around we've got the front of the tower there we've got the side and we've got the back so you've got loads of details there and the bottoms of course light if I kind of speed through this next bit you know I will do separate tutorials on lighting and all that kind of stuff uh, but my time is running out for this t tutorial video so I'll kind of rush through this I'm just going to draw out a plane on the bottom just, just like so I'm going to then go back to my material editor and give that just a grey texture a grey material you can make sure it's just one poly if you really want to so turn the segments down then go to lighting from photometric to change it to standard and then click skylight 
and pop it any, anywhere. It doesn't matter where you put a skylight. You go to rendering, render setup, advanced lighting, and put light tracer on. And once that's on, you can kind of just render that out straight away by hitting render. And you kind of get ambient occlusion, so you can see how you've got some shadows going on in the bottom there. And it looks really good, actually. It does look quite convincing. So you just want to render it so it's you know zoomed in, and you get all that detail that's on the front of it. I rotate around the back. So you know, I really hope that this video was quite helpful for you on um, unwrapping a basic object. And I'll follow it up with something, uh, you know, a different object. So, yeah, watch out for my next video.